Then let's go into the final stretch here. Our last segment of the night. Tonight is episode number nine. Here's our last segment. My name is Janine Driver. I am the celebrity lie detector. Every Wednesday night I go live sometime after 10 p.m. East Coast time. Tonight I went live at 2 a.m. because of technical difficulties and a late night flight that flew me back into the D.C. area where I live. Although I'm originally from Boston, so my Boston accent might sneak out in a wicked every now and then. This is a learning channel for me, so if you're looking for a quick commentary, it might be better to pick up a book or turn into CNN or Fox. This is a learning channel, which means I'm going to repeat the footage every now and then and uh, create cheeky little acronyms to help people remember and learn the information. Again, my name's Shanine Driver. I do this free every week, so be sure to like the page, follow me so you can get next week's episode. And if you're over there on YouTube, thanks for tuning into YouTube. I'm so excited you're here. Please follow me and give positive comments below. I'm open to any show ideas you have. If anything's in the news, be sure to send me a message and I'll check it out. The links to videos are the most helpful because I'm all by myself over here being the executive producer and the content and the actual talent. Here we go, the missing four-year-old. Unbelievable, this story is breaking my heart. I think it's going to unravel pretty quickly. And uh, this is Malia Davis, she's missing from Texas. It's, it's unbelievably devastating, four-year-old little girl. She just had brain surgery not too long ago. She was supposed to wear a helmet as of, I think they said last August, she was supposed to start wearing a helmet. This is a devastating story. Uh, after her um, brain injury, what that happened, she, her along with her siblings were removed. I, I think she has two siblings, if I remember correctly. I know there was a little boy in the car with him. So maybe it was one or two. I got I to gotta figure that out. I thought it was one, but then I read an article today that there was two. So I got to look into this. Nevertheless, little uh, Malia here was with her stepfather, this guy, Darion Vence, Venice, Venice, Vence, V-E-N-C-E down here. And he says that he thought his tire, car got a flat tire, pulls over on the side of the road, and three Hispanic men pull in a truck and essentially kidnap him, his biological son, and little Malia here, and that he was unconscious for a day, on, in and out of consciousness, and when he woke up, Malia was gone. First of all, his story's been changing to police several times. Second of all, he said that he was knocked on the head. We can certainly see that he has a bump here, but who knows how he did that. Uh, now police are looking for him to ask more questions, and as of this afternoon, 7 p.m. tonight, last night, they were unable to reach him. They want to bring him in for more questions. They have found the car. Just yesterday, they found the car, his car that he was in. It looked like this. And this was the traffic camera um, cap capturing the Altima when it drove through an intersection in Sugar Land just before 3 p.m. on Saturday. Now, this is supposedly when this guy, the stepfather, was knocked out and unconscious. So we don't see who is in the car. Supposedly, it's the people who kidnapped uh, the young girl, um, Aaliyah, here. So uh, what are my thoughts on this case? Well, my thoughts are I would like to see an interview with the stepfather is what my thoughts are because I would like to hear what he has to say. I think he probably killed her. And I think that Malia is dead. And I think it's going to unravel in the next three days. I say within the next 72 hours, we're probably going to get a lot more information. And I think this guy's going to be arrested. And it's devastating to me. If you have seen any pictures of this young girl, um, it's very, very sad. Uh, what's going on in this world? Like, can we give kids up for adoption? Or, like, can we take the kids? And, you know, I'm not knocking DSS, De Department of Social Services, all of the DSS. And I do want to say, uh, I know you're doing your best job possible. I don't know how someone can work at DSS. I really don't. Because how do you put kids back in the home and then have something like this happen? And if you were the DSS person that put them back in the home or you were the judge or you were the person, I don't know. I don't know. I couldn't, I couldn't, I couldn't deal with it. Um, I don't know how you do it. So thank you for people who work for DSS. Thank you for doing the job that you do. I don't know how you, I don't know how you do it. Uh, to make this, these calls. I know we want our, the best interest of the kids and get the kids home with the families. And uh, I would imagine there's a high burnout rate for your position. So thank you for doing what you're doing. I know you're probably way overworked 
and have way more cases than you can even keep up with. So keep doing the best that you can. My mom would say live life at level 10. Um, keep doing the best that you can. I know you're making the best judgment. And uh, these types of situations make people question like, what happened? How did the system fail her here? Because somehow the system failed Malia. And uh, where, did, where, where, did they, where did we fail her? Where did we fail her as a society? Um, I'm hoping I'm wrong. Once again, I, these are those cases where I hope, I pray that I'm wrong. I pray that I'm wrong. And uh, I'll rejoice when I find out that I am. Uh, I think she's probably gone. The mother was interviewed recently, and I'd like to talk about the interview. Do you think the mother is telling the truth, or do you think the mother knows there's more to the story? Let's watch this interview from CBS This Morning with Gail King. An Amber Alert is in effect for a four-year-old little girl in Texas after her stepfather says that she was kidnapped. Malia Davis has not been seen since Friday night. Her stepfather said that he had pulled over to the side of a road when two men attacked him and took her. Janet Shamlian is in Houston with more on this very strange story. Janet, a lot of questions here. Good morning to you. Good morning. Here at police headquarters, they are getting ready to resume the search for Malia, saying today they will also be looking at surveillance video. And this morning, we're now hearing from her mother for the first time, who says she just wants her daughter home. It's like a nightmare. It just, it just keeps going and going. Brittany Bowen says she is distraught over her daughter Malia's disappearance. What would you say to your daughter right now? The mommy loves you. And I'm sorry this had to happen to you. The little girl's stepfather, Darian Vence, was the last to see her Friday night, telling police he was on his way with Malia and her younger brother to pick up Malia's mom from the airport. He says he pulled over, thinking he had a flat tire, and was then approached by two men in a blue Chevy pickup, similar to this one. Houston and Police Sergeant Mark Holbrook. One of them makes a comment saying that Malia looks very nice, looks very sweet. Uh, the other male hits Darian in the head. Vence allegedly told police he was in and out of consciousness at times in the back of the suspect's truck with the children. He says when he woke up about 20 hours later on a highway, he had his young son in his arms, but no sign of Malia. Police are now looking for the blue truck and the family's car, a 2011 Nissan Altima. It was spotted on surveillance video Saturday afternoon. Police say Malia had several brain surgeries, the most recent just last month. Family members are passing out flyers and pleading for anyone with information to come forward. I have to be strong for her. I have to. I have to believe that she's okay. I have to. Because that's the only thing that's getting me through this. The group Texas EquiSearch has joined the effort to find Malia, telling CBS News they are hoping for the best. Houston police have not named her stepfather or anyone else as a suspect in this case. John? Janet, thank you. Disturbing story. I think that's about to change. I think that's about to change. So let's go over here to this interview. I want to chat about it a little bit. It just it just keeps going and going. Brittany, it just keeps just it just keeps. Go. All right, I'm going to tell you the first suspicious part here. <clears throat> we see the mom looking up. And this tends to be really odd. And we'll see this with deceptive people. I saw this with the, a, a documentary I did for the Discovery Channel. And the man killed his landlord because she raised the rent. So he stabbed her to death in the shower. And when he, when he was interviewed by police, he was looking up like this. I should have pulled that to add to you guys to this video tonight, at this uh, Celebrity Lie Detector Live. I ran out of time. Uh, so this is suspicious. This is visual. Uh, in these situations, you're, you're, we're looking for someone to look. If she's right-handed, a typical right-handed person will look down to her right for emotions. If she's a lefty, she could be backwards where she would look down to the left. But nevertheless, we want, we're looking for behavior where she's going to look down to process emotions. We're not processing emotions here. She's going visual. Now, some of you may say, well, maybe she's very Christian. And so she's looking up for God and, and praying to God. Possibly. Maybe that's one thing that she's thinking to God. And uh, we, it's our experience in law enforcement that this behavior 
is indicative of someone that tends to be holding something back. Now, if I was the interviewer, what I would say here is I would ask about this movement, this eye movement. It's interesting to me when you're thinking about it and talking about it, this, your daughter missing, you're constantly looking up. What is it that you're, what is it that you're picturing? Going and going. Brittany Bowen says she going and going. Going and going, going and First of all, this is sadness. Uh, 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 she's getting a lot of heat online, I'm seeing from people saying, she's a liar, she's a liar right out of the gate. Well, this is genuine sadness. It does not mean uh, she doesn't know that her husband murdered her daughter or suspects that her husband murdered the daughter. Uh, it does mean it's sadness. I do see genuine sadness here. I think where you might be picking up on some of the fakeness people are weighing in on is that you're feeling like there's more to the story. Uh, this is true sadness. It doesn't mean uh, that she's sad because her daughter is dead. She could be sad because the daughter, uh, because she's going to get in trouble. She could be sad because she's going to lose custody of her other child or children. Uh, could be sad because her husband's about to go to jail because she suspects he probably did this. We don't, she could be sad because she's busted. Um, this is genuine sadness. This muscle right here, these two muscles to pull, actually there's several muscles to make this happen, to pull these inner eyebrows together and up is indicative of sadness. So you'll see more of that in a minute. Oh, Brittany Bowen. Sadness right there. Right here. Says so she is distraught over her daughter Malia's disappearance. Shaking the head no. Again, rule that out. That is not good for deception. It's like, I can't believe I'm going through this. What would you say to your daughter right now? It just, it just keeps going and going. Brittany Bowen says she is distraught over her daughter Malia's disappearance. What would you say to your daughter right now? The mommy loves you. All right. A couple of things here. Uh, sadness again. This is genuine, genuine sadness. I just want you to notice this, that this is genuine sadness. She could be devastated that she didn't leave her husband sooner, that she worried this might happen. I mean, they just went through all these brain surgeries with her. She could be truly devastated that the daughter is gone. Uh, what's going on here where I'm suspicious is here when she says, mommy loves you. That mommy loves you. Okay. That mommy loves you. Uh, the stronger statement here would have been, I love you, honey. I love you. I miss you. Please bring my daughter back. There's no message right here. Like whoever has my daughter, whoever has Malia, let me, she's beautiful. She loves her favorite things. You know, there'd be like a plea and we're not seeing it here. Maybe we see it someplace else. We're just not seeing it here. I love you. I is ownership. So mommy removes her from the statement. So it takes her a step away. It's not as strong as saying, I love you. Because the question was, if you could say something to Mal Malia right now, listen to the question again. Right now. What would you say to your daughter right now? I love you. I love you, honey. I'm doing everything I can. I'm going to get you back, right? But she, he, she does a weaker statement by saying mommy. The mommy loves you. <laughs> and I'm sorry this had to happen to you. This is my most suspicious line. I'm sorry this has to happen to you. Let me repeat this. This is so weird to me. This had to happen to you. What? And I'm sorry this had to happen to you. This is, this is going to go down in the records. Like I, when this case comes out with this sad ending, <clears throat> I'm going to be playing this video clip for a long time to come. What mother says, I'm sorry, this had to happen to you. That language, it, your BS barometer should be going off the charts right here. This had to happen to you. I want you to write that down. Look at how odd that is. When someone says something like this, say it out loud, write it down, read it, and feel what it feels like. I'm sorry this had to happen to you. Not, I'm sorry this is happening to you. I'm sorry you're going through this. I wish I could, you know, I'd exchange myself with you. Like, but I'm sorry this had to happen to you. What the had part is the suspicious part to me. I'm sorry, like it's saying to your kid, he's, she's got a toothache and you're like, I'm sorry I had to get your tooth pulled. You know, this had to happen. Your, your kid has to have surgery. I'm sorry you had to have surgery on your brain. I'm sorry that had to happen. But 
being missing, was kidnapped by whatever, two or three Hispanic people, uh, supposedly, which I don't believe to be true. Um, this had to happen. This right here said to me, um, there's definitely more to the story. And I would have, if I was the reporter, picked up on that immediately. That is unbelievable language. This is a huge hotspot in my world. And I'm sorry this had to happen to you. To be strong for her. I have to. I have to believe that she's okay. I have to. Because that's the only thing that's getting me through this. Strong for her. I have to to be strong for her. I have to. I have to believe that she's okay. I have to. Because that's the only thing that's getting me through this. Uh, all right. What I don't like here is the same thing you're picking up on for sure, which is what? I have to stay strong because it's the only thing that's getting me through this. Me, 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 me. Uh, I think, th what's that country song? It's something about me, you know, me, 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 it's something like that. I think it's a Toby Keith song. Uh, again, keep in mind, these types of videos are being edited, so we're only getting little snippets here and there, so maybe she said more information, but here it's about her, not, I can't imagine what my daughter's going through right now, I'm running through these scenarios in my head, like, I hope she's okay, like, she, she needs a helmet, whoever has her, like, please just bring her back, where is the imploring, where is the please, how come she's not asking whoever took her to bring her back, like, over and over and over, when I was a public information officer, PIO, in New York City at the World Trade Center for ATF, the Bureau of Alcohol, Tobacco, and Firearms, Here's what you learn if you're in PR. What you learn is you say the same thing five different ways, but you're constantly repeating your primary message you want people to hear. So for me as a keynote speaker, I constantly say you can't unsee, unhear, or unexperience what we're going to learn today. I constantly say my job, my purpose on this planet is to inspire people to look at their world differently. Are you being inspired? I constantly say a blue streak is something that changes the direction of your life like that, like a bolt of lightning in the sky. It changes the direction of your life constantly. So it's constantly getting in. What are my goals? Uh, what are your blue streaks? What's something that's going to change the direction of your life? What's my other goal? My life's purpose is to inspire you to look at your world differently so you can protect your friends, your family, your finances. And literally pulling it all together and I say constantly, you can't unhear, unexperience, or unsee what we're talking about. What you're learning now, you're going to use five minutes from now, five years from now, 15 years from now. It's going to stick in your brain. Here, where's the message? Please bring my daughter back. Please, let me tell you what's going on with her head. Please. She's to be strong for her. I have to. I have to believe that she's okay. I have to. Because that's the only thing that's getting me through this. It's the only thing getting her through it. Uh, I think this is uh, going to come up not good news. Remember earlier in the segment, this is episode number nine. If you've been watching the whole entire kit and caboodle, thanks for hanging in there. It's uh, almost four in the morning. I'm exhausted. I'm going to go to bed in my couch over here in my office. I want you to remember at the beginning of our segment, we did this little study with you based on a research study that had been done. And I showed some of you A and some of you B. And I asked you a question, a true or false question. What I shared with you is the research and the study that when we add a picture or we add more details, we tend to go towards a yes or a true. So we're going towards a true or a yes. If I were to ask you, did Malia's mother, do you think she's lying? And I frame it that way because we watch this video. Many of you are more likely to say, yeah, yeah, I think she's lying. And if I framed it, as how many of you believe that she's telling the truth after watching this video? How many of you believe she is telling the truth? Many of you will be more apt to tell me the truth. So be careful of being swayed because there's a video with a lot of detail and just, you know, weigh the facts and see what you're, you're seeing and, and notice what you're hearing and say, all right, are there hot spots here? Is there suspicious behavior here? Are there suspicious words here? In my world, I believe there is. In my world, my BS barometer is going off. My name is Janine Driver. I'm a prayer person. I say I'm a swearing Christian. 
whether you pray or you believe in energy or Buddha or whatever it is that you believe, uh, that's great. Let's meet each other at just believing in whatever it is we believe. You could be even you're an atheist. There is no God. I'll meet you where you with where we have a passion of believing in something, and whatever it is you believe in, let's send prayers and love to all the missing children right now, not just here in the United States, but around the world and all the abused kids that um, whatever your higher power or your energy of what you believe runs this world that uh, for me, I call him God, that he shows up and shows off and, and, and creates a miracle in these little kids' lives. And uh, if you are abusing your kids, please get help. Please get help because your kids have an inherent need to be safe. They have an inherent need to be safe. And it's your job as a parent, as a caregiver, to take care of them and be safe. So if you have an addiction, if whatever it is, if you're suffering from time to depression, please get yourself help. We're counting on you. My name's Janine Driver. This is Celebrity Lie Detector Live every Wednesday night at 10 o'clock and beyond. I start somewhere after the 10 o'clock mark, East Coast time. Then I post it on YouTube. Uh, before I say my goodbyes, I'm going to tell you one last thing. Guess what, everybody? I've been giving this class away, if you haven't seen my first eight episodes, um, that you text this number, 96,000, and you type in Driver18, and you get this free video about the truth about anger. But I've got some exciting news that I'm going to share with you right now is look at this. I'm going to type this in. My virtual training launched yesterday. And so now you can train with me seven days a week. Let's pull this up on the screen. You can train with me seven days a week, 24 hours a day. And here's what the training center looks like. I'll tell you how you can buy um, a subscription to follow me here. And this is the training center and there's different panels. You have a report card. I quiz you on different material. It's all about learning it. Uh, if you're just getting material as a keynote, having me as a keynote speaker, a workshop speaker, or even watching me in Celebrity Lie Detector Live, um, is it really, re are you retaining the information? Is it getting in there? Uh, and then here's how you can communicate directly with me at Driver Dispatch. You can put a comment. And here's some media, Sizzle Reel. It's another body language expert, a good friend of mine, Chris Ulrich. And of course, here's Celebrity Lie Detector Live. My TED Talks are up on there as well. Let's go back to content. Hey, I'm Janine Driver. Welcome to Driver On Demand. Cute, right? Driver On Demand. Right now, you're at the main menu. If you will, let's call it Mission Con control. Every time you log in, this is where you're going to start. This is where you're going to get messages from me or my other coaches and, and updated information. It'll be posted every time you come into this location right here. You can also get to the training center from here. So that's where we're going to go next. That's where my team and I are going to be available to you 24 hours a day, seven days a week. I don't even have enough fingers to show 24 hours a day, seven days a week. And we're going to be your personal coaches and mentors on this growth of expanding your business, getting those distinctions that you probably, some of which already know but you're not applying, or you don't know how to apply them, and some of which you have never heard of that can truly make a difference in your life, can inspire you to look at your world in a different way. So just take a moment, if you want, and get yourself oriented to the main menu here, and then click onto the training center, and let's get started. Listen, 24 hours a day, seven days a week, my three sons and my husband don't even have this kind of access to me. All right, let the journey begin. I'm happy you're here. All right, so there's my little intro. Now let's go down. It's really simple. Look how clean and neat this is. This is the actual training program. When you buy it, you can log in here. Then you go to your training center. I want to show you what's over here. I am so excited. I've been working on this now. My business partner, Steve Fisella, and I have been working on this since last April. So 13 months, 13 months. Did I pop over to the learning system? Oh, look, I wonder if it won't let me share it with you guys. 
because I'm online. Oh, no, here it is. So these are the different courses. Here's eight easy steps to finding the truth and stopping betrayal. This is based on my book, You Can't Lie to Me. And then each of these are courses within the course. So this is the main program. And then these are the courses, Stop Destroying Strategic Relationships. And then here, see how that's a seven? That means there's seven chapters in there. So this one, for instance, increase your EQ, EQ and stay proactive, not reactive with difficult people. When you go in here, hidden happiness, secret to sadness, damaging distrust, all this stuff, phony baloney, conclusion, and then you start here and there are little videos. Let me go back here, bounce around. Um, the other program here, 52 New Body Language Secrets to re Rewire How You Achieve Success, 52 of them. So there's one for every week of the year. So again, there's, these are all the courses in here. Unlock How Your Body and Brain Work Together, A Simple Strategy to Avoid, uh, I don't even know what that is. Let's see, what is this one? Avoid, oh, Irreversible Damage of Reading People. And so you go in here, and these are Secrets 4, 5, and 6. The Notorious False Confession, Baselining, Your Disciplined Approach. And let's get out of here. I threw my TED Talks here and Celebrity Lie Detector. If you're not following me on social media, on all my different social media platforms, I put different videos at different times. So they are updated all in one spot here. It's the only place you can get everything all together. So if you pop over here, um, you can see Roger Stone, Alex Jones, Kevin Spacey, Taylor Swift, Will Smith, Cardi B, Cummington Catholic, Jesse Smollett, uh, Gillette commercial. I think I have another five being posted in the next couple weeks. I have a camera guy coming to my office tomorrow for five hours where I'll be doing all new content with a bunch of different celebrities. This one I think just launched somewhere on social media, maybe on Twitter or on LinkedIn. Will Smith. Let's see. Let me unmute this. Janine Driver, the celebrity lie detector. Today's celebrity, Will Smith. Is Will Smith legit with regard to his social media presence? Boom, if you're not following Will Smith, boom, boom. It goes crazy viral when Will Smith sends out a video. Is it legit or is it a well-scripted marketing ploy to bring us in to hype up some new movie or some product he's selling? All right. So anyway, that's what's happening over here. And then down here, if you keep going, there's business development, there's personal development, there's 21 courses in here, 14 courses in here. There's so much content, you won't even get through it in, in like two years. Not to mention, I'm updating it constantly. So Mitch McConnell, Don't Cave on the Cross, Left is Right, Spotting the Trend Spotter, Let the Cross, don't, let the cross Go to Your Mind, What a Touch Can Tell, From Hidden Thumbs Up, Understanding Versatility, this is interaction styles. We think so it's extroverts and introverts, but there's actually two other categories. Mirror neurons, the two step. I mean, the list goes on and on. I put so much heart and in, in soul into this little baby, and I'm so excited. So how do you get access to it if you're interested in getting access to this virtual train? Oh, and then chair chat, which is a fun, that's just a little fun freebie thing I threw in there. Uh, on what kind of chair you should be sitting on to persuade and influence people. I always say the best way to influence a room happens before you walk into the room. And part of that is understanding the chair someone's sitting on can make them more difficult or more flexible. And you can save millions of dollars if you put people in the right chair if you know what to look for. And there's some big mistakes that we're making with chairs for sure. All right, so let's come over here. How do you get to buy Driver On Demand? You go to my company, which is Blue Streak training.com so bluestreaktraining.com and this looks just like this so bluestreaktraining.com what's my blue streak you could click here and then you can buy it you can watch a video i'm not going to watch it now so you can go here we have founding member members the first hundred people will be a founding member you pay one price and i think there's like a small monthly fee but then you're a member for life so you get all my content as we continue to add content uh, we help even your slowest employees press the finish line. If you are a supervisor or manager, you're able to track how often your employees go online and the programs they're spending the most time in. In order for something to stick, they say you need to re-watch it seven times. 
that's why each lesson is 30 seconds to five minutes long. So uh, how to improve sales and business, how to interpret body language in any situation, exude confidence regardless of the hand you've been dealt. Simple strategy to avoid irreversible damage of reading people incorrectly. Powerful questions to avoid pain and embarrassment. And the list goes on and on. So anyway, oh, that's, that's me from the airport yesterday. That's funny. This is social media. These are a bunch of awards I won and my books have won and how you can contact me right down here. Otherwise, you just click the buy button and you and I can be connecting literally, I think tonight. It went live yesterday. So I think you buy it. I think you're in right away. I'm not sure. Maybe I should buy it myself. All right. My name's Janine Driver. Let me get back to the PowerPoint as I say goodbye to you guys. And I cannot wait to see you next week here on Facebook Live or over on YouTube. My name's Janine Driver. I'm the celebrity lie detector. If you've not already got this free course, be sure to do this. Text 96000 Driver 18. You'll get a couple other freebies too. Thanks for playing with me, everybody. Next week, I'll be on camera. You'll see me in the top right corner of your screen. Boy, did we cover a lot tonight. Tonight, The four-year-old Malia Davis, let's say prayers or send positive energy, whatever it is you believe, that this little girl shows up and there's a big miracle that happens. Wouldn't that be great? Oh my gosh, it would inspire so many people. I hope that that's the case. Uh, what do you see, game? We tried that. Did you get tricked by your eyes? I'm sure you did. The USSR. What does this elbow move really mean? Can you spot which story is the lie with Donnie Deutsch and the big idea? And the number one move honest people do? And spot the celeb game and more. I see some of you spotted the first two celebrities, but not the third. It was a little tricky, right? All right, my name's Janine. Be sure to like my page, follow me, and share it so other people can follow along too every Wednesday night on Facebook after 10 p.m. sometime I go live. I'll see you next week. Next week, we're going to talk about the power of blushing. If you blush, what can you do about it? And what are we doing wrong when we're around people who blush? Boom, my job is done. I love you guys. Have a great week. I'll see you next Wednesday. still. If you're watching this live, go to bed. It's 4 a.m. I'm exhausted. I'm going to go crash on my couch. I'm Janine Driver. Hey, how come there's only two shares of this? Come on, guys. Share this with your page so other people can follow along too. I'll be sure on YouTube to put the time code so you can skip to the material you're most interested in. My name's Janine. If you stuck around this long, thanks. What are you doing here? Go to bed. <laughs>